fitting thermal insulation to a Stuart 504 boiler, a simple and successful method of holding the wool type thermal insulation in place inside the casing of a Stuart 504 boiler. The other day I was in the workshop sitting watching this double 10 V rotating as usual to run it in a bit more. Then my fancy ring doorbell actually rang and told me there was someone at the door. When I got to the front door it was a delivery of a parcel and here it is on the bench in the workshop. And after I carefully opened the parcel this is what was inside. Some galvanised steel mesh that's actually rat proof. Well I don't have a rat problem but I do have a problem holding the heat insulation securely on the inner sides of 504 boilers. A quick word of caution when you open this stuff be careful. As I removed the last piece of polythene it just leapt out onto the bench and luckily it didn't cut me or scratch my hands. Here it is sat on the bench. The rat proof mesh is really good stuff. The holes are a quarter of an inch square and the overall strength of the wire is just what I need. In one of my previous videos from the Making a Stuart Model Steam Plant series I performed a test on different heat insulation materials and I found that this wool type was the better of the two. And you can relax, it's not asbestos. This is modern heat resistant material. There are two types here. There's the wool type and then the board type. Well, they're not really boards, they're just thin sheets and this is the sort of stuff that I would use on a locomotive boiler. This is a small and rather excellent Proxon blowtorch. And with the help of some really high-tech test equipment, that is my hand, I'm going to try and find out how good a barrier this stuff is against heat. The blowtorch is very hot and my hand now hurts. And while my hand is in this sensitive state, I'm supporting one of the pieces of heat-resistant material. And now I'm applying a lot of heat to the area that my hand is just behind. And the good news is I'm not feeling any pain. Let's try some of the wool stuff. This is a good bit thicker. You will notice that the blowtorch is not burning this material. And I cannot feel any heat at all on my hand. I did this for quite a while to see whether the material started to glow red and it didn't. When I took the blow lamp away the front side didn't retain much heat. Straight into the job, I select a couple of the pieces of insulation, hold them against the mesh, and then using a pair of scissors, I cut the piece of mesh. Many years ago, my mother was a dressmaker. She worked from home, and a lot of the time she was telling me off for cutting wire with her best scissors. And all these years later, I'm still doing it. These are a very old pair of scissors. Again, made in Sheffield, proper scissors, proper metal, very hard. It took very little time to cut the piece of mesh that I'm going to use to hold one of the side panels in place. So how did I arrive at the concept of using this stuff to hold the insulation in place? I just thought I need some sort of mesh so I typed steel mesh into an eBay search. And there's loads of it and when I found some with quarter of an inch square holes in I thought that's about the right size. And the fact that it is rat proof is just a bonus. I did find the edges very sharp, so I cut them with the scissors. Then to finish the job off and remove any sharp edges, I used my 4 inch belt sander, and it worked very well. This is my first attempt. I simply bent the mesh over the edge of the thermal insulation, first at one side, and then the other side. I didn't need to cut a lot of mesh to cover both sides of this insulation. In fact, that would have been counterproductive because the mesh itself would have got very hot. This is going to be the inside surface that faces the burner. And once I flattened the mesh using a soft hammer, it really gripped the insulation. The general plan is that the four bolts that hold the side panels to the main boiler cast iron mountings will then be refitted and go through the holes in the mesh to hold the entire assembly in place. And like a lot of good ideas, it was very simple and easy to fit. The mesh supports the heat insulation material, and once the mesh is supported by the bolts that hold the side panels in place, it's going nowhere. In the past, especially with the thinner type of insulation, I've used cyanoacrylic adhesive or superglue to hold the panels in place. That method was very messy, 
and when I first lit the burner underneath the boiler, the smell was atrocious for quite a while. To make the job a bit neater, after I'd fitted the mesh, I trimmed the edges to get rid of any surplus heat insulation material. You may wonder why I'm not fitting this to the boiler that I'm going to use on the main steam plant. That's because I need to make sure that it's successful before I do that. This vintage 504 boiler is going to a friend of mine. I'm going to fit the thermal insulation to the brand new boiler. I think I'll do it in exactly the same way. I'll be installing a gas burner under this boiler in a future episode and testing it. I've fitted a water gauge to this boiler and a tap on the top along with a safety valve and all I need to do now is make some specially sized washers for the banjo union on the siphon. That's all I can say in this video, the heat insulation is now in place. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.